Hi, this is India with Bags and Lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching this video. Welcome or welcome back. Either way, I'm happy that you are here. Definitely consider liking this video. Also, subscribing to my channel if you're enjoying the content. And I have lots of content, so check it out. All right, so today's video, I will be talking about how I grew my hair back. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I feel like everybody's journey, everybody's story is going to be different. And I wanted to share my second time around experience, <laughs> second time around, yes, second time around growing my hair out from relaxed to natural experience. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. So this is going to be a quick one and tip number one is going to, I have my notebook on the floor. Let me get that off the floor. Okay, there we go. So tip number one is going to be, I use weekly protective styles. So that way you have your hair, you just take it down during wash day, style it, condition it, moisturize it, and then put it up in a style that is low maintenance. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to redo it. And that way you allow your hair to rest. I think that is one of the major reasons why I was able to grow up my hair successfully the second time around because of the fact that I was able to leave it alone and use that method. It also helped that I wasn't traveling as much. So it made it easier to just not have to deal with trying to figure out those kind of like work friendly hairstyles, that type of thing when it, it was in its protective style. And that way you could also still go out and about like a normal person. Um, on my wash day, I would use this. I still use this now, which is the pre-poo. And I just applied it to my entire head and let it sit for several hours and would also decondition it. When I would detangle, I would use this also by adding a few drops of oil to it and combing it through my strands to just allow every inch of my hair to be coated with the pre-shampoo. So after that, I would wash it. And these are the shampoos, sorry. I also use the Rue shampoo as well, but I don't have that one with me. No, it was actually the conditioner. It was the Rue conditioner that I would use for a period of time. And then I converted once that one ran out to a different conditioner. But anyway, I started using these hair products here, which, let's see if my, yes. I started using these hair products here, which will feed into another tip that I have later. <laughs> um, but this is AG, which is a natural hair product, and then also Rucker Roots Sulfate Free Shampoo, because I saw the greatest difference with that shampoo after I hair, my hairstylist used it on my hair. And so that was that's what sold me and I started using it. So washing it, moisturizing it, actually conditioning it too is what I did. So the let me just grab the roof so you can see it. Okay, here it is. So this is the, my ring light is too shiny, but basically it's the Rue Keratin Strengthening. This is the shampoo. I was using the conditioner um, just to show you. So for a while I was using the conditioner because it had the keratin in it and I felt like that was helpful as well. So I would use that probably once a month, once every other month uh, to help condition my hair. Yeah, <laughs> to help condition my hair. So washing and conditioning. So next up, I took the approach of when I was transitioning, like I said, from relaxed back to or texturized back to natural again was using the moderately aggressive approach with trims. So I was not comfortable doing a big chop. I That just was not going to work for me. So I wanted to be able to grow my hair out definitely take some steps on chopping down the relaxed ends, but keeping my hair long enough that I could still put it in the protective styles that were going to work for me. And for me, I need my hair to be a little bit longer because that's how I'm used to doing my hair because my hair has basically been long all my life. So that's all I know how to do. <laughs> so, um, so that's the approach that I took. So basically, if maybe your normal trim would be like, a half an inch or a fourth of an inch or something like that, then maybe taking off an inch, inch and a half to make up for some of the that lost time or to help, yeah, make up for some of that lost time, I guess I'd say, by me not doing a big chop. So that's what I would, I had started doing as well uh, on a periodic basis to get some, a lot of that hair off is what I was about to say, unnatural hair, but that was not the right word, uh, to get some of that relaxed hair off a little bit quicker. 
All right, so next up is that I have a tip of seeking professional help. So I don't know about you. I feel like if I feel this way, some other people probably feel that way too. And when I thought that I was, in my mind, transitioning my hair from real texturized, relaxed to natural again, I felt like, well, my hair is going back to natural. I don't, my hair is natural. I don't need help. I can watch hairstyling videos, get tips from people online, which I did do that. But you still need a professional. Um, you still need a professional. So I did start going to a natural hair salon here in um, the Atlanta metro area. So it's called Sweet Roots. So I started going to the natural hair salon like once a month. I thought to myself, I don't know why, but if my hair is natural, I really don't have to go to the hairdresser except for to get a trim and a, a condition ever so often. But I started going on a monthly basis, which I think helped maintain my hair because I had a professional with their hands on my hair. So when my hair was relaxed, I seeked a professional. So why not when my hair is natural? So I had to get out of that mind frame and actually make sure that I am keeping my hair maintained and healthy, which is the ultimate goal and most important thing to do, is to make sure your hair is healthy. So feeding back into the hair products, when I, when I saw the greatest difference with the texture of my hair, even in its texturized state, which it was really rough and, and not as soft, uh, I saw a difference with the hair products that my hairstylist used then. So I decided, and that's what sold me on purchasing the same type of hair products. The hair salon that I go to, like I mentioned, Sweet Roots, they the products that they use are also natural. So not only do they only did they only do natural hairstyles, but they also only use products that were from naturally derived sources. So I thought that was um, definitely a great selling point. Also, I saw that it worked. And so I'll show you those to you again. So these are the two shampoos that I use. I use this one first and this one after. And then I came back through with the leave-in conditioner. So I did condition my hair in the shower. And then I also would deep, uh, not deep, <laughs> condition it, use this leave-in conditioner to add some extra softness protection, manageability with my hair in its protective style. So transitioning from relaxed and texturized is not easy and just because you see a lot of people who seem to have success with it everybody has their varying um experiences with it because everybody's hair is different everybody's situation is different and all of those other things that factor into it so definitely be patient with yourself be patient with your journey and do what's best for your hair to make sure your hair is healthy. That's the ultimate goal is to make sure that your hair is healthy. I feel like that was my kind of goal out of it. And so I would point back to that. to be, So that way before I made a decision, I would evaluate was it the best for my hair and its health. So hopefully this information was helpful. Definitely let me know if you have questions down below. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye.